There is one more set of functions that we haven't taken a look at how to find the derivative of. So we're going to attempt to answer that question today is how do we find the derivative of exponential and logarithmic functions. And we'll break that up into two halves. Once, we'll talk about the exponentials, and then we'll come back and talk about the logarithmic functions. So first, exponential functions. Some important formulas that will help us take derivative. The nicest derivative formula I have all, and it's also the most interesting, is that the derivative of e to the x, the slope of the tangent line to e to the x at e to the x is actually exactly e to the x, which is kind of weird when you think about it. But if our base is not e to the x, it turns out the derivative of any base to the x is that base to the x times the natural log of the base, which just so happens that the natural log of e is just 1. So we end up with two formulas that could be condensed into 1. But since we use e to the x so often, we'll give it its own little formula. But these two formulas are going to be what guide us here as we go into the first part of this video. So let's take a look at some examples of taking derivatives with exponentials. Let's say f of x equals e to the cosine of x squared. What we really have here is just a really big chain rule problem. It's a three-level chain rule. But we can do that. f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the outside. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the stuff, e to the cosine of x squared, times the derivative of the inside stuff. And so the derivative of cosine is negative sine of the stuff times the derivative of the inside stuff. And the derivative of x squared is just 2x. Cleaning this up a little bit, putting the negative and 2x out front, we'll put the sine of x squared next, and then the e to the cosine of x squared after that, just so that it looks a little nicer. But that way, we found our derivative, which contained an e to the x. We could even expand this into any of our rules or patterns that we've seen thus far. So what if we did a quotient rule? f of x is equal to e to the 3x minus 7 all over x squared plus 5x. Well, we should be very comfortable with the quotient rule by now. So we take the derivative of the top, which is e to the 3x minus 7 because the derivative of e to something is e to that something. But we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just 3. And then we have to multiply by the denominator x squared plus 5x. Then we subtract the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x plus 5, times the numerator, which is e to the 3x minus 7. And that's all over the denominator squared, x squared plus 5x squared. Not a lot to clean up in there. So after using our quotient rule and the exponent rule, we'll call that our derivative. Let's do one more, um, one that doesn't use a base of e to the x, but uses some different base. So let's try f of x equals 4 to the x times 5 to the x 
minus x. We could distribute the 4 to the x through, and then we don't have to use the product rule. Well, we still would, but let's just keep it the way it is. f prime of x is equal to, and we'll use the product rule here. The derivative of the first part, the derivative of 4 to the x, is 4 to the x. But if the base is not e, we need to multiply by the natural log of the base, then times the second part, 5 to the x minus 1, plus the derivative of the second part. Well, the derivative of an exponential is the exponential times the natural log of the base minus the derivative of x is 1 times the first part, which is just 4 to the x. And there's not really much that cleans up in this example either. And so we end up with our solution. So basically, all we're doing is we're expanding our repertoire of derivatives to include these two exponential formulas. The derivative of anything is I'm sorry, the derivative of the exponential is the exponential times the natural log of the base. If it's e to the x, it's really nice because the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. We can use the fact that the exponential derivative is so simple to derive and create the derivative of the logarithmic. If I can spell it right, logarith logarithmic functions. And the way we get the derivative of the logarithmic functions is we use implicit differentiation. Because we know that if y equals the natural log of x, we can rewrite this as e to the y equals x, because the base is e, the exponent is y. And then if we take the derivative of both sides of this guy using implicit differentiation, the derivative of e to the y is e to the y dy dx equals the derivative of x is 1. Dividing both sides by e to the y, we get the derivative dy dx is equal to 1 over e to the y. But the good news is, is that we know what y equals. y is equal to the natural log of x. So we have 1 over e to the natural log of x. But e and the natural log with the same bases are inverses, so that leaves us with just the x. And so we find out that dy dx is equal to 1 over x. Kind of neat how the formula comes out. So we've got our formulas. for the logarithms. The derivative of the natural log of x, we just found out, is simply 1 over x. If the base is in a base e, though, we can do the derivative of any log base b of x doing just a simple change of base formula. We end up with 1 over x natural log of b. And these two formulas allow us to take the derivatives with logarithms. Two more formulas to add to our derivative repertoire. And so we should be able to solve a whole bunch of examples using all the other derivative rules we've seen, but now throwing in some logarithms. If f of x equals the natural log of the tangent of x squared minus 5x, 
What we really have is derivatives inside of derivatives inside of derivatives. So that f prime of x equals, using the chain rule, natural log, the derivative of that is 1 over the stuff, 1 over the tangent of x squared minus 5x times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of the stuff, x squared minus 5x, times the derivative of the inside, which is the x squared minus 5x. The derivative there is 2x minus 5. And all there is to do is clean that up nicely, all that stuff multiplied ends up in the numerator, and so we get this nice derivative secant squared of x squared minus 5x times the 2x minus 5 all over the tangent of x squared minus 5x. Let's try one with a log that's got a different base. Let's say f of x is equal to the log base 7 of 2x minus 5 times the cosine of 5x. Here we have the product rule again. So we'll take the derivative of the first. The derivative of log base 7 is 1 over the stuff. The 2x minus 5. And because it's not a base e, we have to multiply by the natural log of the base, or the natural log of 7, times the second part. Actually, before we get to the second part, we still need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just 2, times the second part, which is cosine of 5x, plus the derivative of the second part. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So let's change that to negative sine of 5x times the derivative of the inside, which is 5. And we still have to, using the product rule, multiply by the first part, which is log base 7 of 2x minus 5. Just want to clean it up a little bit. Not much to clean up, but we'll definitely make it easier on the eyes. We'll combine the fraction together. So we have 2 cosine of 5x over 2x minus 5, natural log of 7, minus, we'll put the 5 out front, sine of 5x, log base 7 of 2x minus 5. And we have our derivative. One nice thing that comes out of working with logarithms and derivatives if, is that logs have some nice properties that help us simplify out to something that is very simple to take the derivative of. For example, if we were given f of x equals the natural log of x to the fourth cosine of x divided by the square root of x plus 3, that looks very ugly to take the derivative of. However, we can break this up into three separate logarithms, one for each factor. The logarithm from the denominator is going to be negative. And then we can also pull exponents out in front of logarithms. So what we really have here, rewriting the function, is the natural log of x to the fourth, but the 4 moves out front, plus the natural log of the cosine of x 
minus the natural log of the x plus 3. And then the 1 half power can move out front. Now we've got something that's much easier to work with, much easier to take the derivative of. f prime of x is equal to, we've got a constant of 4 times the derivative of the natural log of x, which is just 1 over x, plus the natural log means the derivative is 1 over that, so 1 over cosine of x, times the derivative of the inside, which is negative sine of x. We'll just stick that in the numerator. Minus 1 half. That's a constant, so that's going to be out front. And the derivative of the natural log is 1 over the stuff, x plus 3, times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. And we can clean this up a little bit even so that it's equal to 4 over x. We'll just say minus instead of plus a negative. And sine over cosine, we should recognize. Sine over cosine is the tangent. Minus 1 over, eh, we could distribute if we want, 2x plus 6. Don't have to distribute, but why not? And we get this nice derivative. So that's one nice thing that comes out of derivatives with logarithms is quite often logarithms help us break the problem down where it started complex. What we end up with is quite simple to take the logarithm of. Another nice trick that comes out of this is what we call logarithmic differentiation. which we use when the variable, we'll say x, but the variable is in both the exponent and base. And the most classic example of that is if y equals x to the x power. Here, we can't really take the derivative because we could use the exponent rule, but that doesn't work because we don't know what x is. We don't know how to do the base. It's, we're kind of stuck until we get this nice trick called logarithmic differentiation, where we take the natural log of both sides. And when we do, we get the natural log of y equals the natural log of x to the x power which allows us to use the log property. The log property says the natural log of x to the n is equal to n times the natural log of x. We can move that exponent out front. So now we have the natural log of y equals x times the natural log of x. Now we can take the derivative, but because this has the natural log of y on both sides, we have to do implicit differentiation. The derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y dy dx. The derivative of x, natural log of x, that's a product rule. We'll always end up with a product rule here. The derivative of x is 1 times the natural log of x plus the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x times the first, which is just x. But x over x is just equal to 1, which is really nice. Then what we need to do is solve for the dy dx. We know implicit differentiation. And it always turns out to do that, we multiply by y. With implicit differentiation, this step's always the same because you'll always have 1 over y. 
I'm sorry, not with implicit differentiation. With logarithmic differentiation, this step is always the same because you'll always have 1 over y on the right. So we'll multiply both sides by y, giving us dy dx is equal to the natural log of x plus 1 times y. So all that's left to do then is to substitute y from the original function. y is equal to x to the x. So dy dx is equal to, and I'll just put the y in front, x to the x times the natural log of x plus 1. And now we've got our derivative. We can use this process, though, to solve things that are much more complex than x to the x. We'll use this process of taking the log of both sides and then the derivative implicitly to solve things more complex that might look something like this. y equals 3x squared minus 5x all to the sine of x power. We have x both in the base and in the exponent. When it occurs in both places, we take the natural log of both sides, the natural log of 3x squared minus 5x to the sine of x. Whoops, lost my n. Not to the 6, to the sine of x. Let's clean that up. Now we have our log property that says that exponent can come out front. So we know the natural log of y is equal to the sine of x times the natural log of 3x squared minus 5x. Then we can take the derivative implicitly. On the left, the derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y times our dy dx is equal to, we have a product rule here. The derivative of sine is cosine x times the natural log of 3x squared minus 5x plus the derivative of the second part. The derivative of natural log is 1 over the stuff, 3x squared minus 5x times the derivative of the inside. That'll go in the numerator. 6x minus 5 times the first part, the sine of x. Now we can solve for the dy dx by multiplying both sides by y. And that tells us that dy dx is equal to the cosine x natural log of 3x squared minus 5x plus 6x minus 5 times the sine of x all over 3x squared minus 5x times y. But we know what y equals. y is equal to the original problem. So dy dx is equal to the cosine of x times the natural log of 3x squared minus 5x plus 6x minus 5 sine of x divided by 3x squared minus 5x times our original problem, which was 3x squared minus 5x all to the sine of x power. And logarithms take that which once was impossible, now very possible and straightforward. So we've kind of done three things today. We talked about the derivatives of the exponentials, specifically e to the x is e to the x. We talked about the derivatives of the logarithms. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x, or 1 over the stuff. And then we talked about doing logarithmic differentiation to take problems that would otherwise be impossible to take derivatives of, change their form so that we can use logarithmic differentiation to find our 
derivative. A couple things to practice with. Take a look at those, and we will see you in class to work on them further.